as a new trader, the first time I heard about Uvixi, somebody said in the chat room, load up on Uvixi as a hedge against volatility. And since then, I have been obsessed with it. And for a new trader to try to wrap your head around the language of futures contracts, rolling futures contracts, contango, it's like, what is that? It's concepts and things that you've never come across before and it's intimidating, it's overwhelming. So if you're somebody like me, you don't mind taking the risks, but yet you want to understand more about the risk that you are about to take, then this video is for you. Please subscribe to my channel where I share trading tips with new traders about the insights that I've been discovering on my journey as a new trader in hopes that they'll help you. And I've worked so hard on this video. I'm working hard on this channel. Comment below to share what kind of videos you'd like to see, what you think of this video. It all helps. And what I've done in this video, aside from this introduction, is I've broken it down into five chapters, which if you take a look at the timeline, it's time stamped. So if you already know about leveraged ETFs, but want to know more about like what other risks are laid out in the prospectus, you can skip around to different sections. Okay, so let's begin with the basics. What is Uvixi? Uvixi is a leveraged ETF. Another term that's used for it is geared funds. Leverage refers to the use of debt or borrowed funds to amplify returns from an investment or a project. Or here's another way to see it. This was a great article I came across, Morningstar.com. Beware the allure of geared funds. Geared funds are essentially funds that amplify the upside and downside of your equity investment. So for every 1000 that you put into the fund, a typical geared share fund will go out and borrow another thousand. So you will have effectively 2000 of market exposure. This is from the pro shares website, frequently asked questions. So what are the investment objectives of geared funds? Most leveraged and inverse funds are called geared funds. They aim to provide a multiple of the return of an index or other benchmark for a single day. Notice that's in bold and it's in uh, italics. Before fees and expenses, that should also be in bold and italics. On their website, this is why they say that it's a, it's uh, its objective basically is it's it's a one day investment objective. So it says it is mathematically impossible to create a fund that makes a continuous offering of its shares and consistently delivers for all of its shareholders a stated multiple of a benchmark over time. So in that comment, right, where someone was like, oh, load up on Uvixi as a hedge against volatility. The reason that traders will buy shares of Uvixi is because they believe that there's going to be a sharp increase in volatility. But a common misconception about Uvixi is that it is tied to or it's benchmarked to the VIX alone. It's not. It's not benchmark to the VIX at all. The VIX is an index that is done by the Chicago Board Options Exchange, CBOE. And I think this is where the confusion comes in because the word VIX, V-I-X, is in the thing that it is actually, that UVIXI is actually benchmarked to. And it, so it's got V-I-X in its little title. So, well, it's big title actually. But UVIXI is benchmarked to the S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index. Woo, I got it right. So it's got VIX in there, V-I-X, and I think that's kind of where it's confusing. And then obviously volatility is going to impact this index, but it's it's not benchmarked to it. So that misconception is confusing because I know when I was a new trader, I thought, ooh, the VIX goes up, so does you VIXI. Cool, that's like so easy. And of course it is way, way more complicated than that. Here we have it from the prospectus. The funds are benchmarked to the S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index. The funds are not benchmarked to the VIX. The S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index and the VIX are two separate indices and can be expected to perform very differently. Then what is the difference between those two things? The VIX is pretty easy, I think, to kind of get your head around. It's basically a way to measure the imp implied volatility of the S&P 500. So in plain English, what the VIX really measures 
is the price that people are willing to pay to buy or sell the S&P 500. Nice and easy, right? Well, the other index that is actually benchmarked to the S&P 500 VIX short terms futures index, that one's a lot more complicated. And the best definition that I've come across that helped me kind of get my head around it is right here on this ETFDB.com, which says the index offers exposure to a daily rolling long position in the first and second month VIX futures contracts and reflects the implied volatility of the S&P 500 index at various points along the volatility forward curve. I'm going to take you to that volatility forward curve at the end where I'm going to show you kind of like what I have seen as like, okay, are these buy signals? When is it actually a good time to buy into Uvixi? The index futures roll continuously throughout each month from the first month VIX futures contract into the second month VIX futures contract. I don't trade futures, so there's really no reason for me to know what all of that means, but as a trader and for somebody who's so obsessed with like the, the concept of these leveraged ETFs and especially ETFs like Uvixi, it's really important to know. <laughs> so I highly recommend that traders try and read the prospectus and i say try because there are some mind melting doozies in there for sure it's uh it's quite the the mind scramble reading the prospectus it becomes abundantly clear that nothing is clear about exactly how these funds work they don't hide it either it's the slickest of slick vague yet concise legal language for you to try and decipher. ProShares has a lot of legal issues to deal with, and so do people that they do business with or are affiliated with. It's all listed. The prospectus is about 200 pages and almost half of it is listing all of these litigations and it's pretty crazy actually so like it starts right here on page you know 108 and then you know as you scroll through it it just goes on and on and on and on so here's the litigation and you know AMBAC litigation european commission credit default swaps antitrust investigation aig litigation federal housing finance agency litigation prudential insurance litigation it just it goes on and on so i highly recommend that that people who are interested in uvixi just take a peek at it and take whatever you want to take from that but for me it's kind of like hmm i don't know about that but it's good to know about it anyways. Okay, so here's an example of some of the mind melting language in the prospectus that I'm talking about. And this is a whole sentence. There's no commas in this. This is crazy, right? Okay, here we go. So it says, the return of each of the ultra fund and the short fund for a period longer than a single day is the result of its return for each day compounded over the period and usually will differ in amount and possibly even direction from the funds stated multiple times the return of the index for the same period. Whew, crazy, right? And then it ends with these differences can be significant. And without a doubt, like even if you don't understand every word and every concept, you will come away with the overriding message that it is trying to communicate, which is essentially like, this is super duper risky. What are the risks of investing in Uvixi? And why are people like, don't do it. Oh my God, don't do it. You'll be sorry. So maybe you've noticed on your research with it, if you've looked into it before, but this is the warning that I come across when I go to check out um, Uvixi on the Charles Schwab website. So there's a big warning that says leveraged products or leveraged and inverse products, exclamation point. And this is what it says. It says not suitable for most investors. These exchange traded products, ETPs, represent unique risks, including leverage, derivatives, and complex investment strategies. These securities are designed for daily use only and are not generally intended to be held overnight. To find out more about trading these funds, please read Leveraged and Inverse Products, What You Need to Know. And then if you go back to the ProShares website, 
as the, the frequently asked questions part, it says on number three is what type of investor uses geared funds? Geared funds are not for everyone. They are generally riskier than funds without leverage or inverse exposure. Geared funds are for investors who take time to fully understand their risks and benefits and the proper ways to use them. These include financial professional, institutional investors, knowledgeable individual investors. The prospectus makes it super clear. They don't, they're not trying to pull the wool over on anyone's eyes. They're very clear in it that it is super risky and the reasons why it's risky. The reasons why it's so risky is where things get really complicated, but without a doubt, it's just like exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, this is risky. And one of the things they say in the prospectus is that you can lose your entire investment in one day. So regarding the risks, if you're not a person who can handle or who can stomach the, the risks that are associated with this ETF, you should absolutely not be trading Uvixi. And that's okay. Just know that, you know, it's not for you. <laughs> and so with leverage, since it's a leveraged ETF, it means that your risks are amplified as well. Keep in mind, you can lose 100% of your investment in a single day and Uvixi decays the fund is rebalanced at the close of market each day, and then there's a variety of complex elements that are difficult to calculate yourself. This is a dominant feature of Uvixi, and there seems to be more unknown than known. I've been digging deep and I'm trying to figure it out, but it's really not easy. How it operates is hard to really know 100%. Since the fund may go up or down, even though it should go up and can do so without, with or without reason. So you might, you know, historically maybe it's behaved a certain way, but then all of a sudden something just totally goes wrong and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So it's meant to be a short term day trade. So make sure you listen to all the warnings and advice if you do buy it and keep your eye on it. So the potential upside with Uvixi, I have to say for me is very appealing. But like with anything, timing is everything and it's not that easy. UVXY, the upside potential. So as a leveraged ETF, Uvixi, like your losses can be amplified, so can your gains. It's volatile and as such, it will experience some wild swings. But this is what it's all about. If timed right, there can be some nice upswings in one day. So far this year, here are some examples. So on 1.27, it went from $11.40 to $14.15, a 24% increase. And I just marked a few others and even some of the smaller ones, um, like on 3.4, that was a 15%. But you know, if you caught 10% of that ride, you know, it's not bad for a quick in and out day trade. And then sometimes you'll get really big ones, like right before the pandemic set in, March 18th, 2020, it went from 95.33 to 135, which is almost a 42% increase. So as you can see, those wild swings can be quite profitable if you time it right and if you know what you're looking for. And I'm about to share some of those indicators with you in this last and final segment. So here on January 27th, this is the five minute chart for you, Vixie. This was the day where it opened at 1140 and it hit a high of 14.15, which was 24%. Okay, so we see here on January 27th, it makes this nice big jump gap up. And some traders won't even enter a trade when they see this kind of action, but it comes back down and there looks like there's this nice area of support here at 11.55-ish, and then it works its way back up. And now the beauty of knowing something about Uvixi, what is it benchmarked to? What is going to make it tick? That's really key to doing any type of price action trading. And this for sure is a great price action trade, day trade, if you know what makes it move. And then so January 27th, this was a 24% increase from when it opened if you caught it at the low and the high. And I mean, so even if you made it 20% or 18%, it's a nice day trade. And so remember how I said I'd come back to that forward future curve thing? This is what I'm talking about. So VIX Central will give you the VIX futures term structures and it's the CBOE delayed quotes. This up, um, updates 
all day long, all the time. It's constantly being updated. So these numbers change. What you want to focus on is this 2250 and this 25400. So what that is, is this contango, these numbers one and two are right here. And if you were to subtract, so 25400 minus 22050. So you get 335. So if you look down here, the difference between these two numbers is 335. And the percent contango is 15.19%. So if you're not familiar with contango, the way that I like to think about contango is basically all is as it should be. Meaning that, so here we have this 2205, and if you look off into the future, all of these prices here are more expensive. So like when you buy a house, for example, in the future, you expect that you are gonna, you're gonna be able to sell it for more than what you paid for it. That's kind of how it should be. That's the way that I think of Contango. When things get out of Contango, and there are these little indicators that you can see, the percent Contango will start to go down. So like 15.19%, like that's big. Like this would not be a good time to get into Uvixi. So this historical prices tab is pretty awesome. When you go into it, you know, you can type in any dates that you want to check out. So let's take a look at January 27th and just see January 27th, 2021, get prices, what was going on, and then bam, there you go. So the contango thing is now negative 0.96. And as you can see, those that second number is lower than the first one. So that's how it gets out of whack. This is what's known as backwardation. So this is a super helpful graph and website to constantly check or just keep it, you know, in the, in the background going. If you feel like volatility's um, gonna be, you know, increasing, because the, the tricky thing is too, is, is as I put in, uh, in an earlier slide, <laughs> and they say this in the prospectus, it's like implied volatility does not equal actual volatility. I mean, that's how abstract some of this stuff is. And what happens is you'll start to see these curves kind of flatten and there's little indicators that kind of make it clear um, that something, you know, is about to happen. So we're going previous date, you know, this is all looking normal and we'll go next date, next date, next date and then the 26 it looks normal and then just like bam it's like whoosh it's in backwardation here's the the technical definitions for contango and backwardation these are both terms that are used to define the structure of the forward curve when a market is in contango the forward price of a futures contract is higher than the spot price Conversely, when a market is in backwardation, the forward price of the futures contract is lower than the spot price. Now that you know what both of those mean, tie that into Uvixi buy signals on the volatility forward curve. So these are the things that I look for. So um, I like watching the five minute chart. You could watch a one minute chart, but the five minute chart's great for me. And when you start to see the percent contango beginning to decrease, Sometimes it'll start around eight and then it goes down to seven and then it goes down to six and it kind of bounces around. Um, but for, for some reason, 5% and then when it goes below is when typically I've seen spikes. So 5% and below usually lead to larger spikes in Uvixi. And remember that these numbers are constantly changing slash updated. So it might decrease to 5% and you might never get a spike because then it goes back up to 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, where it's just way too far from the point of where it's going to be inching towards going negative in contango. So the percent contango goes negative equals future contracts are priced lower than current contracts. This should uh, lead to a spike, a nice spike in Uvixi. But as they say in the prospectus, you know, not, ev not everything and anything's guaranteed with this. So it's up to you to take a look at the chart and interpret what you're seeing. If you think that the trend is gonna, if it's starting to look like it's about to go trending upwards and it slowly is and you think it's gonna continue, then you, know, you can interpret that as a buy signal. 
no current mar market concerns and conditions, and those that trigger volatility. For example, re recent inflation fears and a quick rise in interest rates with the 10-year Treasury yield has led to some sharp spikes in UVXE. This is something that just uh, just happened. So. Make sure that you're in the know with what's going on. And then on your own, confirm what I'm saying and confirm my observations. Uh, so confirm these observations yourself by looking at the VIXI chart history, find some big spikes in price and enter the date into the VIX central historical price and see what the percent contango numbers were at that time. And see if you know you see these big spikes and you know how much would it have been, et cetera. So there you have it. That is what I've come up with on Uvixi. Please subscribe to the channel and comment below. I would love to hear from you. Any thoughts, if you have any insights or tips to share with us about Uvixi, it'd be great to hear from everybody and happy trading.